it's a great honor to be here tonight uh, and see so many of you here and to share some of my ideas for transforming society. I mean, the, the whole reason I started studying economics to begin with was to transform society. As you can hear from my accent, I, did, I wasn't born in Canada. I was born and raised in Bulgaria uh, during the fall, and I grew up during the fall of the Soviet regime. So I saw um, very directly and firsthand what social and political and economic transformation looks like and how a shift in priorities and public policy can really have an immediate impact on people's daily lives. Uh, before that all happened, the, my plan was to become a doctor and you know, go ahead with that. But uh, by the time I, I was old enough to go to university, I had already seen that the kind of hardship and suffering that poorly designed economic policies can cause a community are almost as big or even bigger in some cases than physical illness. So instead of being a doctor, I decided to become an economist and try to work with economics towards transforming society and making people's lives better. And this is the kind of work we do at the Canadian Center for Policy Alternatives. If you are not familiar with us yet, um, we are an independent, nonpartisan research institute, and we work on issues of social, economic, and uh, environmental justice. So what we do is we produce research analysis and solutions anchored around some of the key challenges that Canada faces. And I'm gonna talk about one of those challenges today. The key though that I think really defines our work besides being awesome nerds or cool nerds, I can't remember the exact phrasing Kevin used, <laughs> is that we um, develop bold policy solutions or wild ideas if you like, that unite people instead of dividing them. And one such bold solution that I would like to present to you tonight is the living wage. It's the radical notion that working full time should earn you enough money to support a family. I know. Um, I, I am a labor market economist by training, so I spend a lot of time uh, analyzing the Canadian labor market. And some of the things we see is that there have been a lot of transformations and shifts lately uh, and they're not all for the better. In fact, most of them are not for the better. Um, this cartoon from last week's Globe and Mail illustrates this very well. Um, we're often told that the solution of poverty is to get a job or to create more jobs. But what kind of jobs are we creating and are we spending enough time thinking about that? So many of the new jobs that we're seeing in Canada and in BC post-recession have been part-time. Many have been temporary. Many have been low paid. By any measure of job quality, and there are several, we are going down, not up. So how do we tackle that? Um, oh, be before we get to tackling it, um, here's a, you know, a little known fact. Most poor people are working. Uh, it's just that they're not earning wages that can keep them out of poverty. In 2011, one out of every three poor children in BC had a parent working full year, full time. And a majority of poor children in BC had a parent working at least part year or part time. It's just that they were not earning enough to support the family. Now, some people like to tell themselves, and maybe tell you, that low wage jobs are just for teenagers. They keep them for a couple of years while they're in school and then they move on. But the reality is many of the low wage workers are not kids. They have families, many of them are women, many of them are visible minorities, many of them are recent immigrants, and many of them get stuck in working poverty. Now, just think about it. Every time we open a new hospital, a new university, or a new tech company, um, we do create a lot of well-paid jobs, but at the same time, we also create a number of low-paying jobs that are usually contracted out to service the auxiliary work that these institutions need. Security, catering, cleaning, or even general admin. These are not jobs for kids. These are jobs that uh, adults do uh, and people with families who get stuck in work in poverty. So it's important to remember that the economy has shifted towards um, huge dependence on this local low wage sector. And this is something we need to work on. We need to work on it because families who work for low wages face impossible choices. Feed the children or pay the rent. Heat the house or buy a new winter jacket. 
The result is spiraling debt. The result is long-term health problems, constant anxiety. The result is people taking many jobs, as in the cartoon. Um, and this means that they have little time to spend with their family, little time to help their children with schoolwork, little time to do anything if, if the family is in crisis. It's, it's not just a great hardship for the people in working poverty stuck in those families. It affects all of us. We all pay for the consequences of poverty. And there's something wrong when our economic system is structured such that work is not enough to get a family out of poverty. And I think we're breaking this basic social contract, the notion that says if you work hard, if you play by the rules, you're going to have a decent life. And that's not what we see in BC. So what can we do about it? Living wage. The idea is very simple. Instead of thinking about um, the wage as a cost, think about what uh, a family actually needs to earn in order to afford to live here. So we think about a family with two parents working full time, being able to support two kids uh, in a particular community. So we anchor it in the local cost of rent, local cost of childcare, local cost of transportation, food, etc. So for Metro Vancouver, um, I have been producing the calculation for the living wage in Metro Vancouver for the last five years, and in 2014, the living wage was $20.10. So this, why is this a transformative idea? One of the interesting things that the living wage makes us do is think about not just the earnings that we get to pay for private consumption of, you know, childcare and housing, but also what can we get through services? What is the value of the health care we get through our taxes? What is the value if we had a child care plan? And here we can see that the child care plan actually would reduce the living wage by about $3.57 an hour. So if you are an employer, public sector, municipality, uh, university, business, uh, nonprofit, consider paying the living wage. Consider what it costs. To, to have people pay. And I'll tell you, I know I'm running out of time, but one reason why I think this idea is particularly transformational, and it is because it is a social transformation when you think about wages in that way. Um, when we talk to employers, and we do a lot of talking to employers, something interesting happens. Um, when they see the cost of, of raising a family in Metro Vancouver, most of them have never actually thought about what their workers can afford with the wages they get paid. Did they, this is the first time they ever cursed them. So this idea of thinking that our workers are people and they have lives and they have families and they deserve to be able to have a decent life is amazing. We see each other as part of an interconnected whole. We see our employees as the members of society and it means we're thinking that there is such thing as society not just individuals and individual families going around their business, but society. And that is a really big deal. Thank you.